In today's video, I review what Bonnie Rebecca is currently eating in a day. Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO, organic acid, stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive issues, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So, getting back to what we're actually doing today, which is a what I eat in a day, I'm just gonna take you through really casually what I'm kinda eating today and what I'm enjoying at the moment. I'm starting off breakfast with some overnight oats that I made last night and I've been doing this the night before because I find that oats digest a lot better for me when I have soaked them overnight. So that statement is quite ambiguous, so you don't know whether it's just oats that Bonnie is having issues with or whether there are still wider digestive issues at play. So hopefully this will be cleared up in the video. The recipe for this is just half a cup of oats and then I sprinkle in some chia seeds and some shredded coconut and then I do a big scoop of protein powder and then I add in some frozen blueberries and then I usually do like double the liquid. So if I did half a cup of oats, I usually do a cup of almond milk and then I just give it a good mix and then put it into the fridge and leave it overnight. So as a breakfast, that's absolutely fine. Lots of healthy nutrition and a mixture of soluble and insoluble fibers for good gut health. Beyond that, I still don't get this weird need to supplement with protein powders. If you eat a healthy balanced diet, protein powders are not required unless you are a high performance athlete and you simply cannot consume sufficient calories to get your protein requirement. But in that situation, you have to ask whether if you have to artificially induce growth and repair in that way, whether this type of lifestyle is optimal for your long-term health. And we know it doesn't matter whether you are using plant-based protein powders or not, the impacts of high protein diets on the body in terms of mTOR, IGF-1, and many other different pathways associated with premature aging and disease is not a direction you want to be sending your body in. So this is the brand of protein that I used um, in my overnight oats. It is raw by Amazonia, and this one is the paleo fermented protein, and it's in the vanilla lucuma flavor. Ah, now I see where this weird protein obsession is coming from. And I am obsessed with this and I wanted to talk to you about it a little bit because I know if you've been following me for a while you might know that I haven't really ever gotten into protein powders and that's for two reasons one I always found them too sweet and kind of sickly and I never just really could get over that taste of stevia just didn't really like that and also because I found that sometimes it didn't always digest the best for me. But then one of my friends, which you have probably seen in my vlogs before, her name's Chantel, she actually works for Amazonia and she was like, have you tried our protein? And I was like, no. She's like, you need to try it. And I was like, they're all the same. And she's like, no, seriously. So she brought me over a few flavors to try. And I have been kind of hooked ever since, not gonna lie. It is definitely not too sweet for me. So I really enjoy the flavor of it and the aftertaste, it's not like, like the other ones. Um, I really like this one as well because it is fermented, so I found that it um, it digests a lot better for me. That is why these protein powder companies are fermenting the protein so that you can actually digest them okay. So this is a fairly recent trend in the protein powder space. So a high proportion of people taking protein powders were reporting digestive issues such as reflux, gas and bloating, and even cramping. So in an attempt to counter these problems, these companies actually went, well, let's try and make these easier on digestion by fermenting the protein. They are also adding digestive enzymes to these powders such as protease, lipase, and also amylase. Now, most of you watching this video will acknowledge that if you isolate sugars or fats, and consume them that this will create problems in the body but apparently isolated protein is somehow different. So if you isolate proteins and load the gut up then it puts additional pressures on stomach acid, pepsin and other important metabolic processes. It's also super high in iron which if you guys know I've been struggling with that recently. I have been taking a supplement but this is just a little bit of extra added iron. It is 64% of your daily recommendation of iron just in one serving of protein. Again, a further indication that Bonnie's digestive issues are not resolved after well over a year of trying. Now, iron is typically one of the first nutrients to become 
become depleted with digestive issues. So often gut issues such as SIBO, methane issues, malabsorption issues, and many other digestive problems will inhibit the rate at which iron is absorbed in your body. So if Bonnie is consuming animal products where there is heme iron present, and this is more easily absorbed than non-heme iron found in fruits and vegetables, then I would say this is a real concern after more than a year of trying to resolve her digestive problems. Yeah, so I'm really happy that I finally tried this and I will be working with them a little bit going forward. They've given me a discount code for you guys to use, which is I think 15% off. So that will be down in the description below if you wanna give it a try. There's so this protein powder is $46 for 500 gram so with Bonnie's promo code this comes in around $40 or around $65 for the one kilogram tub. So assuming that Bonnie is having a big scoop of protein powder per day as per her breakfast then this way of eating you would have to spend upwards of $65 a month alone in protein powders. Forget about this, eat a balanced diet and save your money. So I'm just making lunch now I'm gonna do some sort of like nourish bowl but I'm really excited for this one because let me show you. Woo, there we go. We have my favorite ever sweet potato, which is the purple sweet potato with the white in the middle. Yep, love a good sweet potato. Contains lots of vitamin A, fiber, potassium, and good amounts of B vitamins such as B6 and B5. Here's the thing. I haven't really been having sweet potatoes recently. It's kind of like the whole banana thing. I feel like I just overdid it a few years ago and I just don't often crave them. But I was in the shops yesterday and I saw those purple sweet potatoes and I haven't seen them for a while. Like usually they're purple on the inside as well. Um, and I was like, yeah, you know what? I really feel like them. So we're doing that today. And I've just baked them in the oven for like almost an hour whole. And then I have some chicken here that I am cooking. So concerning chicken, look, if we put to one side for a minute and not to diminish ethics, nutrition, or things like saturated fat and cholesterol, the way Bonnie is charring the chicken is creating probably high amounts of heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons which are formed when muscle meats are cooked at high temperatures such as through grilling. And these toxins can significantly increase cancer risk in some people. So while I absolutely see no need nutritionally to consume chicken, and obviously ethically I'm opposed to it, for Bonnie I would highly recommend alternative cooking methods to reduce her exposure to things like heterocyclic amines. So I just got some chicken breasts and then I put some, I cut them in half like long ways, and then I just put some olive oil, garlic, lemon zest, and a little bit of salt, and then I just cook them in this grill. If you guys didn't see my last diet update video, I'll link it down below, and that explains why I included some chicken into my diet. So again, there's no justifiable reason to include chicken in her diet, but let's humor ourselves. So apparently Bonnie included meat in her diets due to digestive issues and to help heal her gut. So over a year later, she's still having significant digestive issues. So how healing really is the meat? Always be my queen in your tight black jeans. I will need an honor of your majesty. So this is it all together. We have the sweet potato, the avocado, the chicken with the sauce on top, and some salad and some cucumber. And I'm so excited to eat. <gasps> yeah. So as a meal, it's fairly good. So good amounts of healthy carbs, fats, and proteins, and an abundance of vitamins and minerals. But again, chicken is not required for optimal health, and especially with the addition of heterocyclic amines and also polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. I also just wanted to quickly say while we've got you here um, about the bushfires going on in Australia right now. I'm sure that you're all aware, but just in case you haven't heard about it, Australia is suffering the worst bushfires we've ever, ever, ever faced. And there has been thousands of people that have lost their homes, over a billion animals have died and just millions of acre, acres of burnt bushlands. Absolutely share those sentiments with Bonnie. What is happening in Australia is horrific and my heart goes out to those affected by the fires and also particularly the loss of animals. But does anyone else see the slight hypocrisy here with what's on Bonnie's plate? Climate change, animal agriculture, and so on. So the first step is I have a pot of water on and it's got some gluten-free spaghetti cooking in there. And now I need to make the sauce. Step two, we need like a little saucepan. I'm gonna take two punnets of cherry tomatoes. Now I'm making this for Em as well. She'll be home from work soon. So I'm making like double the sauce I would make if it was just for myself. So two punnets of cherry tomatoes. 
Then here I've chopped up about eight sun-dried tomatoes and I'm going to pop them into the saucepan as well. So yes, good to see Bonnie is making the sauce from scratch and not opting for a processed refined store-bought option. Then I have three large cloves of garlic that I'm going to put in there. Garlic crusher. Then we go in with the olive oil. You want to give a decent amount of olive oil because that's what's going to help kind of create the sauce. So I'm not measuring this, I'm kind of just like Jamie Olivering it. <laughs> you know how we always just like pause in like half a bottle? Anyway. So that is an absurd amount of oil. Now nutritionally, if we park that to one side, as I'm trying to be fair to Bonnie here, from a taste perspective, I can't imagine that amount of oil in a dish is gonna taste too good. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And then just some dried oregano. Sprinkle a bit of that in there. Almost forgot, we need some parsley and some basil. So we're just gonna chuck in a few basil leaves into the pot to cook, and then later on, I'm gonna chop up some parsley and some basil to like put on top of the pasta once it's cooked. Yes, these types of herbs are great tasting and also contain a host of different nutrients such as folate. Okay, so the tomatoes are really softening up now, as you can probably see. And sometimes when it gets to this stage, what I do, oh, hello, I get out my, the potato masher, and I just go in and kind of squish all of the tomatoes and just get all of the juice out of them. And then just turns into like this lush, beautiful, rich tomato sauce oh my god it's so good so good time to serve up so i'm just going to pop the pasta in the bowl okay, sauce goes on parsley and basil going on top my choice of protein is just some tinned salmon that I'm just going to pop on top here. So again, I'm trying to be as fair to Bonnie as I can be. There isn't a massive amount of nutrition in that dish. And again, just to reiterate, I'm trying to be as constructive as I can be. Tin fish in terms of toxins and contaminants is not healthy. And Bonnie, I'm more than happy to prove this to you. Reach out to me and I'll send you some heavy metals and toxic pollutants test kits. And you'll quickly see from these type of tests how these eating patterns are causing you to accumulate materials that you don't want in your body, such as mercury. Another thing I learned from Jamie Oliver is lemon rind. It is the key ingredient, especially on pasta. So you just get a little bit grated on top. And this is what I'm talking about with the love. You know, you just gotta show these extra little bits of love on your food and it tastes so much better. I'm also gonna cut this open and squeeze it on top. Showing the love to the food would involve letting the fish live in the ocean and not chopping it up and putting it on your plate. Eesh. This lemon is not ideal. I don't think it's lemon season right now. Lastly, we do some salt and pepper and a little bit of nooch. Nutritional yeast, for those of you who don't know what I'm saying. And we're done. Look, I think we've seen enough there. So as a day of eating, lots of unnecessary oils. It's very low in certain nutrients such as potassium and calcium. And it also has the addition of various unwanted chemicals and pollutants such as heterocyclic amines and also mercury. My final point is that it's abundantly clear after well over a year that Bonnie is still struggling with digestive issues. Now you could absolutely understand if she was dealing with something like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, but her issues were confined to predominantly gas and bloating. So these type of problems should never take upwards of a year to resolve. Now it may take another six or 12 months before the penny drops for Rebecca, but she has included animal products in her diet to resolve her issues and clearly they are not working. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and as always remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live and I'll see you next time.